中共的枪炮在北平市区内打死和打伤了很多的学生以及无辜的民众，但是更重要的是，全世界的中国人都被中共的枪炮给打伤了，也打醒了。美国哥伦比亚广播公司今天播出的六十分钟节目里，就详细的描写了中共部队在天安门广场向手无寸铁的民家进行残酷镇压的实况。哥伦比亚广播公司记者在现场出生入死的采访了这场惨绝人寰的暴行，非常令人惊心动魄。身为中国人，目睹中国大陆热血青年在中共部队的枪炮声中一个一个的应声倒地。谁不会怒潮澎湃、热血填膺呢？现在，让我们一起来收看美国哥伦比亚广播公司的记者他们在北平天安门所报道的实况。星期天清晨，北平到处战车隆隆，血腥遍地，充满愤怒。民众仍然在残酷的现实当中惊吓不已。街道上被翻倒焚毁的军车残骸处处可见。北平市怪异恐怖的平静气氛令人感到有些窒息。中共部队费了七个多小时的大肆屠杀之后，才把驻守天安门广场的学生清除完毕。据估计，死亡学生人数大约在数百到数千之间。他们都是为了追求自由民主而丧失了保护性命。中共部队焚化了死者尸体，并且迅速的清理现场。但是北京市民大家的眼睛都是雪亮的，他们知道有很多很多的青年在前一个夜晚遭到了无情的屠杀。北京大学学生正在迎接中共部队即将对校园内发动一场袭击。目前这场攻击行动已经迫在眉睫。CBS 驻北京的记者常谢恩在中共部队进攻天安门广场的时候，从头到尾目睹了整个过程。问中国当局是否已经牢牢控制大局？是否会再度发生暴乱冲突冲突？中共当局并未全然控制大局。现在战车装甲车辆数目之多，超出控制大局所需要的兵力。中共当局并未全然控制大局。现在战车装甲车辆数目之多，超出控制大局所需要的兵力。更恐怖的是，另一支攻击部队在集结之中，民众焚烧了军车，设立路障。甚至使用石块和拳头攻击部队。最危险的是，大学校园内的怒火，学生可能再度示威，再度被射杀。西方情报消息指出，校园下面没有定时炸弹，随时会爆炸。记者问：为什么会特别发生在周末？答：中共部队根据指导纲领上的切换手段，执行戒严令是合乎其逻辑的。他们控制住主要的交通要道，设立关卡。我们看见头一道关卡已经设立。不久，他们就会限制民众聚集的人数。Limit the number of banks. Over the past few weeks, China's pro-democracy students and their millions of supporters captured the world's attention. And the Chinese government seemed unwilling or unable to quell the growing movement. For a while, it looked like they were going to restrain themselves and find out later. Even as this weekend began, there was tension around Tiananmen Square, but few hints of the tragedy to come. What a difference the next hour would make! Outside Tiananmen Square, soldiers confronted the demonstrators. It was a standoff. Elsewhere. Troop convoys moved closer to the center of the city, only to be held back by student demonstrators and their supporters. There were scattered incidents outside the square. A delicate balance was breaking down. At the government headquarters, the face-off turned violent, and demonstrators broke through the gates of the Great Hall. The students held the soldiers off, halting troop convoys that had been reinforced. The students were forced to halt the troop convoys that had been reinforced. A standoff that endured for the next several hours. Chinese troops were forced to halt the troop convoys that had been reinforced. Chinese troops were forced to halt the troop convoys that had been reinforced. On national television, a warning to stay away from the square and to abide by martial law. Chinese troops were forced to halt the troop convoys that had been Toward the square, met by rock-throwing demonstrators, who managed to capture several armored vehicles. Canisters of tear gas were fired by Chinese soldiers. Chinese troops rushed forward, firing tear gas. 
。有报道说，距离天安门广场五英里的军事博物馆附近，中共军队开始开火。在军事博物馆半英里外的北方和西方两地，我们听见自动武器的枪声不断。Armored vehicles finally broke through the barriers set up by the shooters. 装甲车辆终于突破了学生所设立的路障。In the early hours of Sunday, troops stormed the square and. 中共部队强行攻进了天安门广场，并且公然对着群众开火。战车也开进了广场，战斗继续的进行。没有武装的示威民众挺身抵抗。民众高喊着：“不要射击民众！不要射击民众！” And the people are chanting, "Don't shoot the people! Don't shoot the people!" 中共部队接管了广场，整座北平城到处传出枪声，死亡人数不断的在增加当中。By 3:30 Sunday morning, soldiers had taken over. Gunfire was heard throughout the city. 星期天上午五点之后不久 ，CBS 记者理查·罗斯和摄影记者在现场报道的时候，被中共军方抓走。他们被捕的过程透过电话向全球进行了现场转播。听见开火声吗？我们听见了。我们最好离开此地。他们抓住泰德，并且抢走他的摄影机。他们向我们走了过来，我们设法后退逃走。我走，我走，我走天亮时刻，我们才能够清点这场惨剧的实况。根据估计，死亡人数约有数千人之多。在政法大学，学生替死难同学举行了哀悼的仪式。医院里的病床已经挤满，很多伤患只能躺在地上接受医疗。军方宣布，中共部队有数千人受伤。有些军人被烧死，一名战车驾驶压死四个人之后，被愤怒的群众吊死和焚烧。